Hi everybody, it's Lynn. Um, working on May here. Now I realize that it's June and I profoundly apologize for that. But life gets in the way sometimes. But anyway, um, a thought occurred to me that this lion and the lamb is just almost exactly the same as the lion and the lamb on Maiden Voyage. So I think rather than, you know, go through the whole thing again, just, you know, if you refer to the Maiden Voyage video, you'll, you'll know exactly how to paint the lion and the lamb. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of show you maybe how to fix some boo-boos. Um, I read your comments. I'm not always um, able to, to join in. I've been traveling a lot this past month. But I have, um, have read your comments, and I know some of you are struggling with the technique. I get it. It's, um, it's, it's very foreign. So uh, I, I'm going to show you on the larger arc, only because it'll be easier for you to see. And I'm going to make sure that I'm centered. Okay, a couple of problems um, happens with the floats. The, the wet floats. This one, you know, you know, when you're trying to make a mistake, it's almost impossible to do. I was really trying to um, make a big brown banded um, effect. A lot of you experience that when you go to do the float, you load the brush the right way. You know, you have enough water, you blot it, and then you go and go to do your float. Say we're going to do uh, the Burt Umber um, up, up against this edge. So you come in and you hold the brush this way. You paint it on and you get this big brown band like I just, you know, have done previously for you. So I want to show you how to get rid of this dark area and blend it into the rest of the burnt umber wash on the roof. So it's pretty, there's some, some big holes here and that happens. And there's another one right here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but, um, you know, when you go to do another wash on top of a, a, the, the wash underneath it, sometimes it's not completely dry. And when that happens and you go to mop it, you lift the paint that's underneath it. So you get this big hole. So I've got one here for you and I've got one right here for you. We'll start with this one first. The first thing you can do is to try and take your burnt umber and wash it into that area. Now you need to be careful because if you if you get it too much on the other sections, then you're going to have you know three layers of paint on some sections and one layer on another. Well, that didn't really work, so I'm just going to wipe that off and I'm going to give it a quick dry. And we're going to dry brush buttermilk on there. And buttermilk, you would think I would be dry brushing buttermilk, I mean burnt umber. But buttermilk is our base coat color underneath. And that's the one that we're, we're going to dry brush on and kind of neutralize that area. It's almost, it's almost kind of like a magic eraser. So this is a number eight scumbler and it's a dry brush. So there's no water on it. Walking the buttermilk into the bristles. I'm going to reach across and grab a clean paper towel, wipe the excess off, and I kind of test it on my hand just to make sure. And I'm going to very lightly, very, very lightly try and dry brush this area. Now the idea is to work and very, you, you know, with a dry brush, you really have to work at it. I'm going to try and even out this area. Back and forth, lightly. Comes a point where you're starting to scratch the paint. You don't want to do that. Make sure it's dry. Already it looks better. I'm going to come back in and do the same thing again. A little more dry brushing on there. I'm just loading off the side here. Wiping the excess on the paper towel. And I think one more should do it. Now, if it was a kind of a little bit of a hole and not that dark, uh, you could wash the buttermilk on there. In fact, why don't you let me do that on the other side? So I'm just taking a, a um, number eight ultra round. Any size is just the one that I happen to pick up. A little buttermilk on my brush. Very, very watered down. So let's say I want to kind of either, you know, if it's too dark or if there's a bit of unevenness, you can just take that buttermilk 
and wash it right on top. Sometimes use you know use your judgment as to how much or how little paint you use. And I know it seems kind of crazy to be doing this, but then I'm I'm going to take this is a scum I mean a um, duster stippler and just kind of mop it to blend it in. And it really does soften it. And I would dry it. And then I would come in and do another burnt umber wash all over the whole thing. I'll do that super quick for you. So this is um, cactus green burnt umber wash. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, I went a real heavy on the cactus green. And again, I wanted to show you how easy it is to soften that. I'm going to come in with the burnt umber, I mean burnt umber, buttermilk wash right on top of it. I know it seems like maybe a little crazy. I know it would be hard for you to, to do that on top of, you know, your beautiful cactus green. But if it's too dark, it's going to drive you crazy. And you would only have to end up base coating the thing, everything in buttermilk anyway. So give it a try. But you, you need something with a little bit of tooth to, um, you know, soften it and move that wash around and blend it in and honestly it just kind of um you know gets rid of that that darkness and you can either leave it the way it is or do another uh cactus green light wash on top so that's that okay now i've got a section here where it's classic where you come in and you float and you use the tip of the brush and you get that brown band same thing we're going to let's see Grab some of that, um, instead of the buttermilk, I'm going to try with camel. Camel is the color of the bottom of the arc. So I'm just, again, loading it with the tip of my brush. This is pretty severe. I'm not sure that the wash is going to do it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. I'm going to come in with a soft Maxine's mop. I think maybe if I dry it and do one more wash, that should even it out. Sorry about the hair dryer. Okay. Yeah. You also you could dry brush on there, but. There we go. And um, one more little section right here. I did that little uh, burnt number, like I dropped my brush or something like I do a million times. I'm going to take, do the dry brush again, but this time with the camel. Just lightly. I think I still have some buttermilk in here. Uh-oh. No. Take a smaller scumbler and do it. Back and forth, very light, very, very light. The idea is to build, do it even with the dry brushing, we want to do layers. Eventually, you'll fix it. It's so much easier to just try and repair a little tiny area than to go back and have to repaint the whole entire bottom of the arc. Oh, I just picked up buttermilk instead. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, um, checks. This is this tiniest little brush that I have. Um, I know Sheila was demoing her checks and she uses a little brush. Uh, you know what? Whatever your comfort level is, this is the size piece. That's the original and the checks up top here are super tiny. I get it. So if you wanted to, uh, th they're in black and the background is buttermilk. So if you wanted to use a little tiny brush or even a little flat brush, you could. Again, it's whatever your comfort level is. You certainly, if you use um, a brush, you have to, you know, don't use any water or you'll never, uh, 
you'll never be able to have enough water paint mixture to cover this little area. It'll just, you'll either have too much paint or too much water. So just, just do straight paint. That's what, again, with this teeny tiny brush, this is a, don't even ask me what this is. I never use it. I just wanted to show you. It's a 10 aught. Um, what I use is a Rapidograph pen. This one is a 0.35, which is a little bit bigger than the one I usually use. Um, the other one ran out and I had this, so it's a good size point. What I wanted to talk to you about with a Rapidograph pen, show you really quick. Whoa, look at that. That's one of the perils of India ink. Everything unscrews. You can get these from um, Viking Woodcrafts. You can get them from um, Dick Blick online, places like that. You could just Google it and uh, they're available. This gray part unscrews. And then this ink chamber pops away from the, the tip. I don't want to do it. And you fill it up to a little line. And then there's a little bottle of ink that's included with the kit. Screw this gray piece back on. Screw the bottom back on, put the cap on, and then shake it. And if you hear, listen, can you hear that? Put it back near my microphone. Hear that rattle? That means the ink is activated and it should work. The thing about a rapidograph pen or um, a permanent marker, the lighter you touch, the better it's going to work. And I, I just love it. And I use it all the time, so it's definitely worth the investment for me. They're pricey. They're um, probably at $35 or so. This is kind of the stuff that I live for. I just, I really love the detail. I love, um, I love the depth that you get with the India ink versus the paint. I know it's not going to show up on the camera, but um, it really, it's really great. So what I, I also wanted to show you was the bottom of the arc, how I did the lines. And really, I wish there was some big fancy thing that I did, but all I don't measure anything. I just, I, I'm not that person. Uh, trust me, if you wanted to, you certainly could. So I just take the ruler and my rapidograph pen, or you could use a marker, or you could use a, a liner brush. And I kind of just eyeball it. And do it that way. I'm going to do the whole thing. And then I come in with those funny little ends of the boards and nail holes. I think it's funny. And you can also do, I'm going to do it this way because I don't, until the ink sets, I might smear it. I came in a little bit closer on these clapboards. Honestly, usually I just eyeball it and don't use a straight edge, but I took a, a little more care this time doing the ARC series. I wanted them to look a little nicer. Yep. Whoops. And that's that. Um, I, the little windows, I did use uh, the tip of the number four ultra round. So, and I think a couple of more little things I wanted to show you. So when we um, say that this, hypothetically, this is all painted, the last thing we're going to do is come in and float around the inside edge up to the checkerboard, right, right here. I'll do it over on this side. And I would do it all the way around. Okay. Then I would come in and do my checkerboard. Just like that. That's it, guys. That's my little tips and techniques for you for um, for May. And June will be right around the corner. Uh, I don't have enough memory on my, my card. So um, hang in there. And I will, I'll see you soon. Bye.